You're listening to the Write Project Podcast and Radio Program, a show about writing and modern Newfoundland author culture. This program is produced and recorded at CHMR-FM 93.5 FM in St. John's, Newfoundland and Labrador, and is aired on other great stations in the province and elsewhere in the country. It can also be heard online at www.chmr.ca. I'm your host, Matthew LeDrew. Welcome to a very special episode of the Write Project Podcast. Today, we've got a host of authors on to answer one of the most frequent questions that's asked of any author. We're asking them, if you had to do something differently as a child or a teenager to become a better writer as an adult, what would you do? And today to answer, we have on Paul Carberry, author of the Zombies on the Rock series from Engine Books. If you could tell your younger writing self anything, like if you could go back in time and talk to yourself when you started writing, what would you tell yourself? I would tell myself to get an editor. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. That That's... But you found one. I did, and she's great. So. Yes, she is. Thank you very much. Next up, we have J.E. Solo. She recently just put out her novel, Freak. J.E. Solo, if you could tell your younger writing self any one thing, what would that be? Well, that's an interesting question because I have recently gone through a process of um, eliminating all my old journals. Um and so I got to read some really terrible stuff. Let me see. I guess it would be, you know, to uh, what I said earlier, you know, to be precise um, and to keep practicing. You know, to be honest, in my case, um, I'm, I'm glad I didn't put a lot of writing out when I was younger because I wasn't ready. Um, and I think... Um, So to my younger self, it would be just keep practicing, keep writing, talk to more writers, read more. Um, Because it took a long, long time for me to get to a point where, you know, I really uh, developed uh, my style and kind of know where I'm going now. Yeah. And this is weird, too, but um, being in the arts, being independent, I spent a lot of time writing grant applications and proposals and business plans. And um, I really feel in retrospect, because I have gone and through all my um, files, and I'll tell you, 80% of it was that. Yeah. And of that 80%, piles and piles of crap uh, that I generated you know, what, 10% of it actually resulted in something. And it also very much interfered with my writing because I I started to become trained in this formal BS, um, like writing, it's like homework, you know, yeah. that artists have to do if they want to be funded in any kind of serious way. And uh, this is talk about speculative. So, I mean, I don't know. I guess to also really just go for it, you know? For sure. Um, Yeah. Awesome. Thank you very much. Next up, we have Aaron Vance, editor-in-chief of Engine Books and the editor of the From the Rock anthology series. If you could tell your younger writing self anything, what would it be? Oh, wow. I... I think I would tell them to, you can write for yourself. You don't have to write for someone else first. Because the first person, the first reason I really started writing was for someone else. Okay. So I would tell them that you can write for your, yourself too. Yeah. Yeah. That's really smart. I think so. Yeah. That's a great answer. I'm pretty, I'm pretty pleased with the way I started writing though. Yeah. She was pretty cool. She was. Yeah. Yeah. Like grade 8 Aaron. Yeah. Grade 8 Aaron was pretty cool, I'm sure. No, actually, she wasn't at all, and that was the whole point. Um, yeah. <laughs> let's not talk about grade 8, Erin. She was awful. Poor girl. She's here now. <laughs> I'm really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no one needs to see that girl. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much. Next up, we have Jamie Thomas on the line right now, all the way from Wenatchee, Washington. Jamie Thomas, if you could tell your younger writing self any one thing, what would it be? Well, this is actually...
actually a great question because um, my first book was published when I was 38 years old. I am 38 years old. Um, And up until now, I have not been writing in this capacity. I will tell you that when I was 17, 18, and um, going off to college for music, my parents, my lovely, long-suffering parents, begged me to instead maybe double major and to uh, write or to become an English teacher um, at the time because I I was a fairly good writer even then. Um, And I refused because... By God, I wanted to be on the stage, and uh, it took 20 years uh, to get here, so I'm not sure that I would go back and tell that Jamie to not do it, because then I would not have ended up in the place I am now, possibly wouldn't have met my husband, had my daughter, had those experiences, but I probably would have told a a younger me to do it um, in the sense of... uh, Maybe just do it on the side all the time. When I was in, uh, you know, younger years, I used to write all the time in a notebook. I wrote some really bad poetry, really, really bad poetry in high school, Um, like abstract, brokenhearted uh, poetry. And I wish I still had it because I'd love the good last right now. But, you know, when I became an adult and was working and studying and all that, I kind of let writing fall by the wayside. And, um... That's really sad. I would go back and tell myself to keep going with it because who knows what I would have created maybe a long time before now. I feel like it took me a really long time to get to where I'm at now. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. That's good advice. Uh Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have Tenneth Frost, best-selling author of the Immortal Solus series. Tenneth, if you could tell your younger writing self anything, what would it be? What kind of language am I allowed to use on this podcast? Um, we, we don't curse a lot, but you could say something <laughs> along the lines of it. I would tell my younger writing self to get her head out of her ass and sit herself down in a chair and start writing something, even if it's going to be crap at the end, because even if it's horrible, she's going to be way ahead of where she would be otherwise. Yeah, that, that's fair. I tell that to people all the time. Actually, I, I find there's this odd defeatist attitude, even if, with people writing essays. Like, they won't hand in an essay unless it's perfect. And I'm like, if you don't hand it in, you'll get a zero. Literally any mark is better than a zero, but they, they won't finish sometimes. Yeah, I mean, I make sure that my books are as close to perfect as they can possibly be before publication, but my problem that my younger writing self had was that she wasn't willing to even write a horrible first draft. I would never encourage her to actually publish something that was horrible, but she didn't understand that the horrible draft was the first step to moving toward that imperfect, but far, far better finished draft. Yeah. I wonder if it would help if it was possible, if, uh, if you could get a collection of, authors like good authors like king or george r r martin to actually publish their first drafts like as a special edition like the first draft edition so we can see just how bad it is because i feel like that would actually be helpful for young authors like when you were younger to actually see a very bad first draft from an established author and then you could see how the process works and how far it comes over. Yeah, I, I think it would be helpful. I think it would be a huge, <laughs> I think it would be a huge challenge to get any of them to actually do that because I think there is a lot of ego involved, and a lot of authors do want readers to just think that there's some kind of magic happening, and they sprinkle fairy dust over their keyboard, and this perfect story comes out of them. And I th- think even the ones who admit that their first drafts suck would be reluctant to actually let anybody see how badly they suck or in what ways they suck. But if someone could actually make that happen, I think it really would be good for younger authors. Yeah, I agree. I really agree, actually. I'm going to call Stephen King and get him on that now. (laughs) Thank you very much. Next up, we have Laura Lana Dunn, the superstar short story author who recently put out her first full novel, Ashes, which came out in June 2020 from Engine Books. Uh, Laura Lana Dunn, if you could tell your younger writing self any one thing, what would it be? Hmm, how young are we talking about here? 
As young as you like. As young as I like. Um, well, routine is great, so figure that out. If you go to bed and wake up at the same time every day, it's a lot easier to plan your day for writing time. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've strangely gotten a better schedule since uh, since the pandemic started happening. I don't know how that is. Like, I keep seeing stories of everyone else, you know, losing their schedule. And I'm like, no, I've been asleep the same time and awake the same time every day. I think it was like a reset for you because you were always on the go and now you don't have to be. Yeah, no, that that is fair. I've also changed my schedule so that the first thing I do every morning is write. And I find I like writing, so I makes me want to get up. Whereas if I'm getting up to do what I would call work, I hit the, alarm, the snooze button 40 times, you know? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's interesting. I always had the issue, I was a night writer, like I'm, and I still am a night owl completely. Uh, now it's just with life, I'm, I'm too tired to write, you know, late, late in the evenings. But because I would get into a groove, I wouldn't go to bed until 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And then the next day would be a fun adventure of navigation. Uh, and since reversing that kind of, even though it's not intuitive, it's, it's much more helpful. Like, it works better. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. I used to be a night writer, too. And I... I, I, I don't know. I, I think it's just about, uh, I think that's what comes naturally to a lot of people, but it's, you, you kind of should train yourself to have it so that you can have a better work-life balance. Yeah, I think it's easier to shrug it off if you leave it till later. Yeah. If you're too tired or you got caught up in something else, which I mean is valid because life happens and this is not a judgment thing, but having had moved it to a specific time during the day, whether it's like, well, you do it first thing in the morning. I can't because I have a young child, so I'll do it after, just as he goes to bed. So that's the writing time. Yeah. So chances are, if I'm home and he's being put to bed, I don't have anything really planned necessarily to do during that time. So it, uh, if I could have done that 10, 15 years ago, we would have been a lot farther ahead for sure. I also find it funny that I'm like you're like you're like uh, you're you were just like I don't want to judge people and I'm like, are you sure this is Laura? <laughs> I will judge people for many things. Let's be honest, but uh, you know, not for going about your day like you need to go about your day. That's fair. That's Can't really dictate how someone should spend their time, just so long as you know they're not being dingleberry about it. That's fair. That's fair. Thank you very much. Next up, we have Ali House, author of the Segment Delta Archives series, as well as a frequent contributor to the From the Rock collection of anthologies. Ali House, if you could tell your younger writing self any one thing, what would that be? Am I allowed to swear on this? No. Okay, finish your stories. <laughs> gotcha. I think I can figure out where the swear would have gone was. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I would say finish what you start. I have so many half written or one paragraph stories and the older they get the more i forget what i was trying to accomplish and if you at least if you finish something you can work on it but if you just leave it hanging it's gonna sit there forever and collect dust so finish your darn works that makes perfect sense i'm gonna leave in you say asking if you can swear because you can you're allowed okay. to ask if you can swear you just can't swear <laughs> All right, perfect. Thank you very much. Next up, we have the author of Alligator and February, Lisa Moore. Lisa Moore, if you could tell your younger writing self any one thing, what would it be? I think it would be not to be frustrated, to trust again. So you, I just said you have to trust the reader. Maybe you have to trust yourself as well. I really believe that everybody has a story to tell or a thousand stories to tell and that we make ourselves we make who we are through the stories we tell and people are telling stories all the time we live in a in a cloud of stories uh you know you go to the supermarket and people are telling stories and i 
I be- but that doesn't mean that there isn't skill involved in telling. And skill is something that you do learn through practice. And so I would say to my younger self, don't be frustrated. Don't be afraid. Well, you have to be afraid because I think it, it is big stakes telling a story. It's always big stakes being honest and, and also breaking ground and, and trying to do something new. Um, but I would definitely tell my younger self, just keep trying and don't give up on on something that feels right. Yeah, that sounds wonderful. That's very good advice. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Next up, we have Peter Foote, owner of Fiction First Used Books, the founder of the Genre Writers of Atlantic Canada page, and frequent contributor to the From the Rock anthology. Um, if you could tell your younger writing self any one thing, what would that be? Dear God, don't use so many filler words. <laughs> the amount of times that I write scenes and that and like is just atrocious. Usually when I, I finish something and I, I type the end on my first draft, I I go pour myself a, either a coffee or a red wine. It all depends what time of day it is. And then I'll go back and sit and use the search function and look and see how many times I've used seems, that, and like. And it's just, oh, it's just disgusting. It's, um, yep. Uh, more words generally doesn't tell a better story. Um, if you focus on telling a good story with the least amount of words, I think you generally put out a better product. My uh, my filler word used to be very. I've actually been very good, very good, uh-huh, yeah. with that uh, lately. But that's because if down in my writing nook I have a nice big sign that says words to use instead of very with a great big nice list so I can just stick my head up and when I catch myself typing very I can look up and and see what another word to use. Because really the word very is unnecessary because, like, the word for, for very tired is exhausted. You know what I mean? Like, there's right. anything that yes. you could put yeah. very on as the description, there's a better word that already exists for it, chances are. And that word, like you said, is a better word, and it conveys more of an impact to your reader. And technically you're using less words because the word exhausted is, by 50%, less words than very tired. Right. Yeah. Thank you very much. Next up, we have Morgan Murray, author. Currently, he has the book Dirty Birds. Uh, Morgan Murray, if you could tell your younger writer self any one thing, what would it be? Uh, grow up ten more years. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. Uh, everyone thinks they're a genius writer at uh, at twenty, don't they? Yeah, I was brilliant writer at 20 and i'm crap at 35 but it's writing somehow better mm. i feel you i'm i'm, I'm kind of going through that right now and i keep people keep telling me that like well no you're just aware so the product will be better and i'm like but only if i can get over how bad i am <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much next on the line we have gareth mitten contributor to about face and dystopia from the rock Okay, if you could tell your younger writing self any one thing, what would that be? God, it's, there's so many things. Um, just write. Just yeah. write. That's and get it. out of your own way, like you said earlier. Yeah, get, get out of your own way. Don't overthink it. Just write and and share it and be brave and fearless and just write. Yeah, really. Thank you very much. Next on the line we have Nicole Little. Uh, Nicole Little, if you could tell your younger writing self any one thing, what would it be? Uh, oh my God! Don't give up. Um, I, I distinctly remember when I was a child. I think I was about. I must have been about nine or ten. I'd always wanted to be a writer. And, um, like, even when, before I could actually write, I would just scribble on bits of paper and call them my books. Yeah. And my parents had, I think it was some guy that was, like, 
trying to set up RRSPs or something like that, you know, for like an educational fund or something. Sure. And he came to the house. I remember he was wearing a suit. And he sort of bent down to me and was like, and what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, I want to be an author. And he laughed in my face. Oh, that's not nice. I I know. I was just so traumatized, like, as this little child who had this, like, big dream. And he had, I just remember being devastated and him saying something about, like, that's not really a career or something. Mm. And... Oh, I was just so sad about it for the longest time. And obviously, you know, like I'm nearly 40. I still remember that. I can remember what he looked like, what he was wearing, where I was standing in the house. I remember everything about it. It was such a, I I suppose it's a bit of an exaggeration to say it was a pivotal moment in my life. But it obviously had some influence on me. Um, And I don't know if maybe that had something to do with the fact that it took me all this time to work up the nerve to you know actually make a go of it um but yeah i would just definitely speak to that little kid and be like he doesn't know what he's talking about you just keep going and you do what you're doing i find adults that say that to kids what's really going on under the surface is they're annoyed that this kid wants to do something that they can't like i never hear that like, that whole, like, oh, you can't do that, or anything like that. I never hear that said to a kid by an author. I always hear that from people who can't write and kind of wish they could. <laughs> yeah, probably, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's gross. It's one of those things where it's like, I, I tell some of my younger private students all the time, it's like, when people tell you you can't do something... What they mean is they can't do it, and they don't want you to be better than them. Yes, yeah. 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 Good advice. Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have John Haas, author of The Reluctant Barbarian. John, if you could tell your younger writing self anything, any one thing, what would it be? Get started. Yeah. Get started and don't stop. That's That's good. I would say, because I, I, I did a lot of writing when I was a kid, and it wasn't until I had kids myself that I got serious about it, and I wish I'd gotten serious sooner. I, I feel you. I, I feel like every writer looks back on all of the time in their youth that they didn't write and just yeah. blames them for the fact that they don't have a bigger library. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then you read someone like Ray Bradbury, who was writing since he was like seven and always seemed to be serious about it. Uh, Jim Shooter is my go to example for uh, that. Yeah. Jim Shooter. Yeah, he was like 13. No, eight. He? he was a published eight. author with, with DC Comics when he was eight. And they uh, were like. We need to. We need someone to write this comic book for kids. Who knows kids? I know. Why don't we hire a kid? It's the forties. There are no labor laws. <laughs> it's like what? Uh, what? I'm sorry. You just hired an eight year old. That's why they all have ridiculous name like names like Elastic Boy and Stretch Arm Girl because he was eight. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, he did uh, Legion of Superheroes. I yeah, that's what really? that is, yeah. 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 Oh, my Jim Shooter. He was a good guy, though. If, if, you ne- if right. you've never read it, uh, find his blog and read it. He d- he did a lot, a lot of cool stuff in his life. Oh, cool. Yep, and he's uh, he documents it all on his blog. He's a pretty cool dude. Oh, I'll check that out. Yeah. Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have Matthew Daniels frequent contributor to the From the Rock series, as well as the author of the upcoming novel, Diary of Knives. Uh, Matthew Daniels, if you could tell your younger writing self any one thing, what would it be? You don't need to be so afraid of the starving artist scenario. Other people have survived it. It's not the end of the world. It's frustrating, it can be scary to have to worry about where your next meal is coming from to a point. But I, I structured my entire seven-year university experience around being sure that I would have a job to keep me secure so that I could write from a position of safety, from lack of a better word. Yeah. 
And that was a mistake. I should have been writing. And whether you get a, a job in your field or not, whether you're passionate about it or whatever, the fact is that, it, I mean, it takes work no matter what you get into, and there are risks regardless. Yeah. Like when I looked into getting into the field of librarianship at the time that I did my research, just as I was finishing up my undergrad and deciding on my master's, librarianship was where I was at. And then I started my librarian degree in uh, the fall semester of 2008, which our historians and economics out there will recognize as around the time when the global economy took a nosedive. And suddenly all the opportunities in my field that were that I was seeing everywhere had dried up. So I came out with a master's degree, a large amount of debt, and no closer to financial security. And that's kind of a horror story from the perspective of talking about starving artists versus having financial safety. But uh, where I'm coming from in, in talking about that is not necessarily that you should just jump into your passion projects and expect the world to work out for you. No. you you still need to, you might need two or three jobs. You might need to make some hard decisions. You might need to really get some skill sets going on, applying for writer grants and looking for other ways to bring in writing skills like uh, freelance editing, doing public readings, uh, manuscript evaluation, teaching classes. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff that you can do out there with a related skill set like that that still keeps you in writing circles and often keeps you writing. Um, what it comes down to is, you know, yeah, you got to you got to be concerned about where your next meal comes from. Don't let that overwhelm you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I I went yeah. through that a lot too. I I worked a um a, a terrible job as a at a call center for way too long just because I needed that that constant that like uh, if things go bad i've got another paycheck coming in two weeks and, and the jump to full-time writer was scary i believe it and remains remains that way <laughs> like it's it's uh it's only been like three years but it's 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 rarely not scary yeah yep but don't give into that no yeah yeah Fear leads to anger. Uh, anger leads to hate. <laughs> hate leads to suffering. Suffering leads to the dark side. Yeah. But you get a really cool sword. You do get a cool sword. You do. It's almost worth it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, my. <Yeah. laughs> Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have tie-on collective author Susan McDonald. Um, Susan McDonald... If you could tell your younger writing self any one thing, only one thing, what would it be? Start earlier. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I wrote my first book when I was in grade six, I think. Yeah. And, um, and it was, you know, pretty awful. But I... I gave it up. I gave up writing as I got older, and I got very focused on going to university and, and my career, which is in healthcare. And I got sidetracked, and I didn't keep it going. And part of me thinks that um, I might have been more creative and had more energy at, when I was younger, and, and so I might have had a bigger body of work by this age if I had kept it up. I just I look think back. that's the only thing. Yeah, I mm -hmm. just look back at all of the time in my youth that I wasted playing video games or something like that. Like, things that I wish I hadn't done, and I'm like, you could have had more books out. Like, yeah, the one that you're working on right now, it would have been done if you'd started just six months earlier. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Youth is wasted on the young, as they say. Mm. Mm. All right, well, thanks for coming on again. For all of you, we'll be here again next week at 4.30 Newfoundland time or online at chmr.ca. Please tune in, and we'll talk more about writing culture in Newfoundland.